Hey guys, I'm back here with uh, Dom today and we're doing another body weight session. Today we're going to look at unilateral strength on the lower limb, some core work and we finish off with a little bit of intensity just to get that sweat up. I love working a slow body weight movement because that's where you really build the strength in your muscles. Absolutely. All right, so we're going to get straight into it today. Um, I'm going to set the timer. If you want to start in a split squat position, so that's that way, yeah, on the side that will look like this. Just make sure that your knee's a little bit behind your heel, but not too far back. I'll hit the go button, and what we're going to do, you're right to go, Dom. So we're going to go up and down. We're going to spend all our time using the right leg as our front leg for this particular block and then we're going to do all the exercises on the left leg. So as you can see here, Dom's just going up and down, but she's not racing through it. We're using a slower tempo just to build some time under tension, and that's just going to create a little bit more intensity in the muscle itself as we're doing the exercises. Remember, we don't have any uh, weights in these um, today, and so we can use that slowness to really build our strength. Each exercise is going to go for 40 seconds, you're going to get a 10 second interval. So that's our 10 second interval. So what we're going to do now is Dom's going to stand together here and then she's going to take a step back with her left foot. So the intensity is still remaining on the right leg there. She's going to step forward and back. Make sure that the step back isn't too large. We don't want to turn it into a stretch. We want that right glute to really activate. She can even keep her torso leaning forward a little bit more as she comes back. That's just again going to em emphasize the glute. The beauty of doing bodyweight exercises as Dom is, you can see she's not wearing her shoes, which is great, uh, especially if we want to build a, a nice foot to glute connection, which is really important for building strong glutes, is to have strong feet and vice versa. So again, we're doing this one for 40 seconds, then we'll get a 10 second break, there it is. Now she's just going to step back and we're going to hold for 20 seconds. This will finish this side. So she's going to drop her knee just off the floor, and it's going to be a pretty intense 20 seconds. Ooh, it's Isometric. <laughs> Isometrics are a really good way to um, develop your stabilizing muscles, build some uh, lactic acid, and really get that burn. You're almost there, Dom. You've got three, two, one. Shake it out. Okay, so we're going to get a sec 20 second rest here, and now we're going to do everything with the, with the left leg on the front. So she's going to step back with her right, find her split squat position again. Split squats are a great exercise to do, whether with body weight or with weights. The split squat's slightly different to the lunge because you'll notice here that in the split squat position, the feet aren't moving. So it's a static movement. The only thing that's happening is she's going up and down. With the lunges, it's where the movement is more dynamic and the foot will step back and in like she was doing before with those reverse lunges as the second component to this. Perfect. Again, keeping the tempo nice and slow. Her knee, you'll notice, is coming just off the ground, so she's not actually touching the ground, which is really good. So then we're just working on a little bit of deceleration there and that eccentric loading. And that's also going to um, really add some intensity to the exercise. Two, one, 10 seconds rest. We come and step together again, and she'll be stepping back with her right leg, again, keeping that left leg as the stance leg. And off you go. So stepping back, perfect. That's brilliant. Again, she's not overstepping, not trying to step too far back. I often see that people do, when they do their reverse lunges, they do take quite a long step. It can really stretch out that hip flexor a little bit, but it can actually be a bit problematic as well and cause you some issues. So just behind the, the heel with that knee is probably the best place you want it to be. You create a nice, lean of the torso through here, and that's gonna get that glute fired up as well. Plus you get to work on a little bit of your knee and ankle mobility through that without overdoing the, the hip flexor. All right, so she gets a 10 second rest. You have your final 20 seconds of your isometric little burner here. Stepping back with the right leg, and she's gonna hold for 20 seconds. Now this is intense to help you with get through that. Try to just use your breath. You, you can see Dom's breathing quite hard here. She's just working with that stress, using her breath just to calm the body down, keep her mind in a good place while she's under a little bit of pain. <laughs> well done. All right, shake oh. it out. 
All right, so what we got, we got the, we're moving on to the next block now. So what you're going to do now, you just did your left leg as a yep. stance leg. So now you're going to use your right leg as a stanceless leg. And we're going to go into our Cossacks and in, okay? So I'll reset the timer. And we start our second phase. All right, so off you go. She's stepping out. Perfect. Now Dom has great mobility, as you can see. She's getting some nice depth. Pushing across. You probably can't see, but her back's staying straight the whole time, which is what we want. We don't really want to get too much flexion through there as she steps out. It just means that you're probably gonna have a little bit of tightness in your hamstrings. It's gonna change your pelvic position a little bit, and you're not quite gonna get the loading that we're after. Even though there's no weight in here, your spine's not gonna be an issue, but you always want it to have that sort of straight, nice spine, even though there isn't any load for the position of the hips so that the the glutes, the hamstrings, and the quads are working more balanced. All right, so what she's going to do then is come, keep the right leg down. She's going to do a squat, and she's going to come up into the march position. Drop and march. Off you go. So the left leg is coming up and down. Again, that right leg is staying stuck in the mud. Perfect. Flexing that foot or? Yeah, have the toe flexed up and away from there. So that foot position when it's out, actually gets that glute to work better. When the foot's here, the glute doesn't have to work as hard because there's less weight out the front. So bringing it out and flexing that toe, hip flexors working on the left, glutes working on the right to stabilize this pelvis, really good. And up. We finish this round with another burner as well, which will be a squat hold. All right, so you get 10 seconds, Dom. Then we're gonna do a squat hold. You have your arms out, I'm just gonna stay in your squat position. All right, off you go, Dom. Don't want to start early on this one. <laughs> Good work. So you can, you can you get a little lower there, Dom? Yep, perfect. Hold that position. Try and keep your arms up. That way we get some intensity in the shoulders and arms as well. Quads are burning here. Feet are working hard. Core's working hard. You've got one second. Well done. Oh. Shake it out. All right, so now we do the Cossacks to the right. Just going to tuck your little tag in there, Dom. Always. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this time Dom's left leg's going to stay stuck in the mud. She's going to step out into a deep Cossack with her right foot. Nah, come back. We'll start in a second. All right, so oh. off you go. Excellent. Good. Good. Notice Dom's keeping both feet on the ground here. That's great. If she wanted to make it a bit more advanced and get some more depth, she can roll that foot up and come onto the heel and she'll get a little bit more depth through there. Really just depends on your mobility. The Cossack or the lateral lunge probably isn't trained as much uh, in the gym and probably not programmed as much either, but it's an essential ingredient to all our programs. Uh, it really gets to work the glute on the lateral aspect as well as the inner thigh or our adductors. And it also builds their mobility through that. Okay, so now we're going to the squat to march. The left leg will be the stabilizing leg as she steps down, gets nice and deep, drives up. Okay, so off you go. Good. Good. I always like to add the arms as well. So if you get your left arm opposite to, so there, and then that's just mimicking our running position, getting our contralateral movement, just gets to work the brain a little bit, which is really important that we have that motor pattern. Perfect. Driving through, yeah. And that left arm working with that right knee at the same time. There's just a little bit of coordination between the shoulder and the glute, and then across from the hip flexor to the shoulder and the pec as well. All right, and then Ooh. 10 seconds rest. We got into our 20 second squat hold. Okay, so this time what we'll do to challenge it up a bit, hands behind the head. Yep. Get down nice and low, trying to keep your glutes low. Good, and we're gonna hold that. So with these squat holds, the higher up you go, the more quad you're going to get. The lower you go, the more you're going to re Ooh. rest those quads a little bit and get more into the glutes and the hammies. You got five, four, three, two, and one. Awesome. So that's your legs done. We're going to go into the core now. So each of these little blocks are four minutes long, or about 440. Uh, we're going to go through it all once, which will be about a 20 minute workout, but you can, if you're feeling good, do it all again, yeah? All right, so. If you're brave. <laughs> <laughs> if you're brave. So we're gonna start in a mountain climber position here, Dom. I'll reset our clock. 
And the timing's gonna be the same. So Dom's gonna start with a really slow mountain climber. She's got her fingers spread nice and far. That's gonna give her some good wrist support. And her shoulders are directly over her hands. As she pulls in, she holds for a second. She's pushing the ground away, so her back is coming up towards the sky. And she's holding and taking her time. She's trying to create as little movement through her back and hips as possible. Okay, so it's like we're working anti-movement here on the core as she is bringing her knee in. Perfect. She's also using her breath really well to, main, to manage the stress and relax. Perfect. All right, so what we're gonna do is onto our back into a hollow hold. We're gonna do a basic version here first. So she's gonna mm -hmm. stay in a nice tuck position. So head and shoulders up. And she's just gonna kick one leg out, just one, just one, yep. And then she's gonna bring it in and switch, okay? So this is the basic version. When everything's close to the midline, it's less stressful, the muscles don't have to work as hard. When everything's further away from mid the midline, obviously there's more weight further away from the torso and the core, so the core has to work harder. So we're gonna go through two rounds of this ab work. So on the second round, we'll, we'll up, up it a little bit and go into the harder one. Trust me, it still burns. <laughs> With this also, just keep your chin tucked in, look between your knees there. Um, a lot of people do feel the stress in the back of the neck. Um, it's got to do a, some postural things uh, and just your abs. The stronger abs get, the less intense that will be on your neck in time. All right, so then we're into the V-sit for our 20 second hold, okay? So up onto your bum, good. Come up a little bit more, there we go. Now Dom's doing a really tough V-sit here. She's gonna hold for 20 seconds. If you wanted to, if you can't do that, you're just gonna bend your knees. That's the easy version. But the easy version of the V-sit is still quite challenging, isn't it? Definitely. Two, one, and 20 seconds rest. Okay, so we're gonna do those three exercises again. So back to the mountain climber first. Take your 20 seconds, shake your arms out. With your wrists, if you get sore wrists, the best thing to do is just to keep the base of the palm on the mat and have your fingers on the floor. It just means that your, your wrists won't go into as much extension and it's a nice way just to take some loading off those wrists if that is something that does trouble you. Good. So again, nice and slowly as we go. It's a completely different intensity as when we do mountain climbers with some speed, where we're kind of working through and using the intensity and the speed as our intensity, getting our heart rate up. With this one, heart rate's still gonna get jacked, but what we're looking at here is again, using the core to manage on three points of contact for a longer period of time. So those stabilizing muscles, really working hard. And stabilizing muscles should always be trained and never neglected. Awesome, going onto your back, we go into the hollow hole with the kick outs. We're gonna try the harder version first, Dom. Mm -hmm. This is where the both legs are out, one will come in, but one will stay out, so good. So, yeah. so she's gonna pull one knee in and then bring the other one back, perfect. So now you can see that there's the foot further away from the midline, core's working much harder now because of the fact that there's a, a larger torque force being created there. She's pointing her toes, that's gonna help incorporate the quad there, which is really important in this position, as well as the glute. Okay, so both muscles there stabilizing the hip on this end, she's working hard with her core and lower back to stabilize on that end. Super intense exercise, you've got eight seconds, Dom, you're killing it. I'm Five, sweating up the four, stool. three, Two and one, oh. awesome. And then we're gonna finish with the V-sit. Okay, and then we're gonna do the last round which will be a little bit of intensity. All right, so up on your butt. And knees bent, shoulders back here, come a bit higher up. Yep, yep, good. I'm gonna challenge she's myself. Gonna, she's gonna go strong for this one. Good, you got 12 seconds. Breathing hard. And you can see Dom's always using her breath really well here to manage that stress. Nice, slow exhales, small lips, creating the pressure in the core. Well done. All right, just take 20 seconds, maybe a minute before we get into the last bit, which was the intensity. So here we'll do the tall kneeling to squat jump. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna do our 90-90 crunch, get the burn through the core, and then we're gonna finish on the Superman hold to get a bit of a stretch in the front line, but working the back. All right, I'll set up the timer. Dom, you're doing really well. Yeah, feeling as expected. it. It's with no weight, you still feel so much. 100%, yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, so onto your knees. And this is the one where we're going from here, up, 
and squat jump. Yep. Okay. You ready? Yep. All right, so let's go. Just under five minutes of high intensity work here and squat jump, good. Softly onto the knees, back up again. Perfect. So with this, you can see she's staying low as she comes out of the kneeling position. So she's ready to spring up, uses her knees really well to catch that landing before going back again. So the intensity here is not only in the explosive up phase, but in the catch of the down phase where you're using those soft knees. It's a really good way to teach the jump and the landing mechanics. Often people are a little bit uh, sort of stagnant when they come down and they just don't use their knees as much as they probably should to decelerate. But in doing so and rest, well done, onto your back, we're going into 90-90 crunch. By using those knees, we're working those muscles really hard to just absorb from the bounce. Okay, so feet into 90-90, flex the toes back. Dom's just gonna reach and good. Now we're adding some intensity here. So she's gonna come up and she can go really quickly or she can pause at the top. So there's two ways we can use the intensity there. Notice she's not bringing her hands over her knees, a completely different sort of exercise. She's reaching for the sky and that's just getting her serratus anterior. These muscles here, which are really important for the shoulder, working as well. You got 15 seconds. Good. The knees up position, great position to do a ab crunch. Disengages the hip flexor here, which connects to your lower back. So if you're doing a traditional crunch with your feet on the floor, sometimes that can give you a sore lower back because the hip flexors are pulling on that lower, on that lower back region. The knees up doesn't do that. All right, so onto your belly, into your Superman hold for 20 seconds. So she's on her belly, she's gonna reach out in front and just hold that position. So we're getting a little bit of a stretch through that core, working the back. But the challenge of this is that she probably needs to breathe after doing the high intensity, heart rate's up. It's a challenging position to breathe into, so it's just stressing you out a little bit on that end as well. Okay, so we do a second round. Take a 20 second rest. Guys, we have about two minutes to go, two and a half, and then we're done. This one burns because your body's so warm, activated. Yeah. The little, on the knee, my booty. Because all of the leg that yeah. work we're doing before. <laughs> it's on yeah, fire. Yeah. All right, let's go for a second round. Up and go, excellent. Yeah, I chucked this little part in because everyone likes to finish with a little bit of intensity and just to get the heart rate going, uh, even after you've done the strength work, it's always good just to get a little bit of lactate build up. Uh, helps release another hormone called prolactin and that's our relaxation sort of hormone and it's uh, really beneficial to um, how we feel after the workout. Eight seconds, Dom. Keep going at home, guys. You're almost there. You got three, two, one. Legend. Ooh. Back onto your back for those ab crunches. If they did have weights at home, what could they do? They could hold the weight in their hand, whether it's in both hands or in one hand. I also, if you remember, I've taken you where I've put the plate onto oh, your yep. shins there as well. And that's just gonna load up those hip flexors a little bit and challenge. Or you could be really savage and do both. <laughs> the plate and the weights. Yeah. So you can use dumbbells, a ball, a, a weight plate, whatever you like. Cans of beans. Cans of beans, <laughs> whatever you have, yeah. Mama's pasta sauce. Um, the other thing is that you could have a box under there to support you as well as a regression um, if you find it hard just to keep your feet up in that position too. So you've got three, two, one. All right, and then we're just gonna do our Superman hold. We'll mix this one up. We'll have the hands behind the head with the elbows pinned back. And this is our last 20 seconds before we're done and we go into our cool down. All right, so up and hold. Notice she's keeping her eyes to the ground. That's really important. We don't want to have our chin up here and looking ahead. We just want to keep a nice neutral spine through there. She's really pulling back on those elbows as well. So we're really building the mid back muscle, something that's predominantly weak in the general population just because of sitting in iPhones and stuff nowadays. So really good exercise to master that. All right, well done, Dom. All right, so come over and just take a seat. We'll get into a stretch. So what we're gonna do for a stretch is just a child's pose. And uh, we're gonna use our hand position here to attack different parts of the lap. All right, so from there, she's just reaching out. I'm gonna get her to bring her two thumbs together here. Just bring your thumbs together, yeah, good. And that's just gonna stretch through that lap region out a little bit more on this. Also a really relaxing position, so we're just gonna focus on taking some deep nasal breaths. 
down into the abdomen, filling up the rib cage and let that rib cage expand. Try and hold your breath for a second or two and then let all the air out. So let, let the air out from the stomach first. Try and hold that rib cage shape and you're just gonna get a nice stretch through those rib cage intercostal muscles. So we'll spend about 30 seconds to a minute here just to help get that heart rate down. And then we're just gonna do one glute stretch because we did work our glutes uh, a fair bit and quads as well if you wanted to. So while Stom's there, if you did want to work, uh, stretch your quads, we can do the half kneeling hip flexor stretch that we did in a previous class. Um, but for her glutes, a really good one that she can do is otherwise the pigeon stretch or just a figure four where she's just coming down and sitting onto that. Both will do that. And that's the other option where she's lying down. Perfect, yeah. And again, just try and stay nice and relaxed. Keep focusing on your breathing here. With these stretches at the end of your lesson, you're more than welcome to hold them for two to three minutes. Remember if you're doing stretches and static stretches before your class, no more than about 30 seconds. And we'll switch sides. How are you feeling, Dom? I feel good. Feel good? It's very relaxing just having a bit of breath work at the end. 100%, I feel yeah. like often you just finish a workout, you walk outside. And and people just go out and yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, it's too stressful. 100% because your body's still in that sympathetic yeah. stress mode. So being able to switch from that sympathetic to a parasympathetic and that relaxed state before you leave the room mm -hmm. is going to really be good for your energy and your mood. Yeah, definitely. You're much like calmer 100%. and kinder. <laughs> <laughs> and if it's, again, like if it's, a, if it's an evening workout, it's pretty imperative that you do do this stuff so that you find it easy to go to sleep that night. If you don't, you could have troubles going to sleep because you're still feeling pretty jacked and you haven't really told your mind and body mm -hmm. that the workout's over and you can just relax now. So this is a really good way just to tap into that consciously. Excellent, that'll do us today, Dom. Give me five. Thanks, Legend. Nice work. If you're brave, put it on repeat and do it again. Yeah. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.